This is Partners in Practice, a weekly series dedicated to the evolving field of the advanced practice clinician. Partners in Practice is produced this week in cooperation with the Association of Family Practice Physician Assistants, offering three annual CME conferences for PAs and NPs at family-friendly destinations nationwide. Now, here is your host, Physician Assistant Lisa DeAndre Linnell. Puerto Rico is the only U.S. territory that has no law authorizing physician assistant practice. Although legislation was introduced last year that would work to change this by licensing PAs to provide health services in Puerto Rico, very little movement has occurred on the bill. But this hasn't stopped the development of the PA profession. In August 2010, the first class of physician assistant students started their program in San Juan, Puerto Rico. Through a partnership between the Chatham University PA program Universidad Metropolitana, and the VA Caribbean Healthcare System. My guest today is Physician Assistant Luis Ramos, Program Director of the Chatham University PA Program, and he'll be updating us on the PA role in Puerto Rico. Hi, Luis. Welcome to Partners in Practice. Hi, Lisa. Thank you for having me. Luis, could you start by giving us some background on how healthcare is delivered in Puerto Rico? Well, healthcare delivered in Puerto Rico is very similar to the states. There's very little difference between the two. One of the exceptions is that the government of Puerto Rico still have some government-run institutions. They're called units or clinics in which people have access to immediate care, and then from there they can be referred to higher care if needed. And what are some of the health care challenges there? Well, the challenges in Puerto Rico is the lack of physicians. In the last few years, they have had more and more physicians leaving the island for higher salaries here in the States. And they're also having an influx of foreign medical graduates coming into the island to take advantage of the opportunities they have in Puerto Rico because of the lack of physicians. The government of Puerto Rico has provided licenses to physicians, which otherwise could not practice in the States, to be able to practice in Puerto Rico and help to fill the gap from those physicians that have left the island. Gaps are what physician assistants fill, (laughs) especially when it comes to the brain drain problems that we've seen in a lot of countries. Are there currently any mid-level type providers or equivalent to a physician assistant working in Puerto Rico? No, and I believe that's a problem. They do not recognize nurse practitioners in Puerto Rico, and they do not recognize midwives in Puerto Rico as well as PAs. So this legislation that we're trying to pass through legislation down in Puerto Rico hopefully we will address all three of those areas, not just physician assistants. Well, can you give us a brief history and then bring us up to date on the efforts of bringing the PA profession to the island? Sure. I actually personally started working on having Puerto Rico recognize the PA profession back in the early 90s, as early as 1991. And when I was in the military, I was stationed down there in Puerto Rico, and I took the opportunity to go and talk to some legislators there and basically introduce myself and explain to them what the physician assistant profession was all about. In the process, I found out that they had previously introduced legislation a few years before that, but it was defeated because it wasn't supported by the medical association nor the physician profession in Puerto Rico. They felt at that time that they had sufficient physicians on the island and they did not need another form of medical professional to go and help them. So since then, they have introduced legislation to uh, recognize PAs twice, sometime in the mid to a little late 80s, and then the last time, I believe, was in 2005. And just recently, a legislation was introduced that appears to be to recognize the PA profession, but in fact, it's not. It's just a way to authorize physicians, which cannot pass the medical board, to be licensed in Puerto Rico and basically work as physician assistants. So let's talk about that current bill. Could you explain a little bit more what you mean? Well, actually, the bill has been introduced by one of the senators down in Puerto Rico, and it's intended to basically recognize foreign medical graduates that have attended and graduated from well-known institutions. Some of them are in Mexico. Some of them are in uh, the Dominican Republic. And the idea is that these individuals can practice in Puerto Rico under very limited circumstances, basically as physician assistants. But they will not be required to attain any kind of training or pass any kind of boards. And that's the part that we are very concerned about. It does not recognize the PA profession. It's basically using the title of medical assistantes, which basically is a direct translation from physician assistant, to authorize those individuals to practice in Puerto Rico. So it's not really a bill for physician assistants per se as we know them. It's a bill for foreign medical grads to work 
in a similar model as physician assistants. Correct. The interesting part is that the justification they use for the legislation for the proposal is almost identical to the wording that we use in previous legislative attempts into why the physician assistant profession was needed in Puerto Rico, except they're using it for the means of having these physicians, which they feel that do not have jobs there, to be able to capture that group of individuals and give them a job and have an opportunity to actually provide some services on the island. Now, I understand the need for that because they really are in a big trouble in the sense of they have lost so many physicians that they are basically desperate in trying to find a way to fill that gap. But for some reason, they do not want to recognize the physician assistant profession as being capable of filling that gap. Well, does the PA profession have support in Puerto Rico? Yeah, we have tremendous support, which is kind of interesting. We have had more support. I believe that everyone that I've spoken to in the government there, from the governor to the resident commission in Washington, D.C., to legislators, senators, representatives, all kinds of politicians, including some physicians on the island that have worked in the states with PAs and want to see PAs in Puerto Rico. And they're very supportive about it. The only thing that has been opposed to legislation has been either the Medical Association in Puerto Rico or what they call the Colegio de Medicos Cirujanos. The Colegio de Medicos Cirujanos in Puerto Rico basically is an organization that all physicians that will like to have a license in Puerto Rico must belong to. So it's not a, a voluntary organization. And they're the ones that control basically the medical profession in Puerto Rico, and they have been the ones that have been more opposed to recognizing the peer profession on the island. If you're just joining us, you're listening to Partners in Practice on ReachMD, the channel for medical professionals. I'm PA Lisa DeAndre Linnell, and I'm speaking with physician assistant Luis Ramos, program director of the Chatham University PA program, and he's updating us on the physician assistant role in Puerto Rico. Well, Luis, not being able to practice there has not stopped the education of physician assistants. You work for the Chatham PA program. Tell us how you and Chatham got involved with Puerto Rico. Well, the initial involvement had to do with our need of obtaining additional clinical sites so we could expand the program due to the demand of applicants. Trying to get clinical sites is actually a problem that all PA programs have across the country. It's becoming more and more difficult as the time goes on. And we felt that in the area where we are, we're actually in the Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania region. So we have exhausted basically all our resources in respect to clinical sites. So we felt that in order for us to grow and expand, we will have to go outside the state. In the process, we recognized certain areas that there were no PA programs anywhere around or any medical schools that we could affect. And Puerto Rico, for example, was one of those areas. Virgin Islands was another one of those areas. And there was a couple other areas we looked into. We visited those different areas, but the one that actually had the interest of having us go there was the one in Puerto Rico. And specifically, Universidad Metropolitana expressed a lot of interest for us to partnering with them in order to bring the uh, profession down to Puerto Rico. Well, tell us about the program. Well, the program is two years long. I'm going to talk specifically about the cohort of students we have in Puerto Rico. I want to make the distinction that that is not a separate program from the Chatham University program in Pittsburgh. That's actually a set of students from Chatham University, Pittsburgh, that are doing the educational experience down in Puerto Rico. Now, they're not doing the entire two years down there because we can't do that. In order to be able to have a distant campus, for example, we have to have equivalent educational experience. And in order to be able to do that, we could not duplicate the laboratory experience that our students get here in Puerto Rico. So therefore, this group of students that are in Puerto Rico have to come to Pittsburgh in three separate residencies or what we call seminars. They're about two to three weeks long. And they participate in lab work during those two to three seminars. That way they can have the experience that they need, equivalent experience that our students here get in Puerto Rico. Now, the rest of the educational experience, they can easily have it in Puerto Rico. And that's what they're doing right now. They come here for the first three weeks and the two years. They spend about nine months here in Puerto Rico. And then come back to uh, Pittsburgh for two weeks. And then they return to uh, Puerto Rico to complete their clinical year. And do the Chatham students go to Puerto Rico? Yeah, some of our students actually have started doing rotations down in a VA hospital down in San Juan, which is the other partnering institution that we have. The current students, I'm talking about students that enter in 2009, and they're on the clinical year. So we have already been sending students down to Puerto Rico to do clinical rotations, but only in federal facilities. And once they finish, 
let's just think positively that they will have the ability to practice in Puerto Rico. How do you think they'll be utilized? That's our hope, that by then we'll have legislation actually recognizing the profession. Now, I don't know if you're aware of this, but of all the 50 states and basically most of the U.S. territories, Puerto Rico is probably the only one that still has not recognized the profession. And we have made a point to that to the legislators and the government down there, and they are very surprised that they are basically the last one to jump on the train, for lack of a better expression. But anyways, the group of students that are down there right now, half of them are actually students that apply to the program from Puerto Rico, and the other half are actually people that live in the States. They're not native Hispanics or they're not Puerto Ricans. So it's a mix of students that are actually going through that program. Those that are from Puerto Rico have the intention of remaining in Puerto Rico once they graduate, hoping to practice there. Now, the only places they currently they can work in is at the VA hospital and at the federal prison down there in Puerto Rico. So are they excited or nervous about what they're accomplishing right now? Oh, no, they're very excited. Actually, you cannot find a better enthusiastic group as they are right now down there. And even though those that are not from Puerto Rico are taking place in our attempt to have legislation passed, they're participating in meetings. I was there a couple of weeks ago actually visiting some legislators. I was at the governor's mansion also talking to the governor aides there about the legislation. And uh, I was also talking to the president of the Medical Association of Puerto Rico, which, by the way, it appears to be changing a little bit and starting to support our attempts to have the profession recognized down there. And in each one of those meetings, I have students from the group down in Puerto Rico attend and also talk to those individuals. What do you think some of the differences are between the USPA education model and the Puerto Rican education model? What kind of adjustments did you have to make? The adjustments were actually very minimal. The way we do our education here at Chatham University is that we use problem-based learning. It's not a lecture-based kind of format. Students get together in small groups with one faculty facilitator, and all they do is discuss uh, medical cases, pretty much very similar to the show House on TV where they just sit around a table and start talking about what the problem is and how to solve it. And they do approximately about 54 cases the whole entire year they're here. And they actually have very little lectures. The other courses that they have down there basically are done online. So no different than the courses that our students here in Pittsburgh do, which are also online. Now, there's one lecture course here that we do in our program, and that's basically the basic sciences course. It's a review of anatomy and physiology, microbiology, genetics, a material that most of the students are required to have before they come here. But because some people have taken it last year and they have taken it five years ago, perhaps ten years ago, this course basically brings everybody at the same pace and to the same level. That course is recorded and is also sent to the Puerto Rico students synchronously and also recorded so they can also view it at any time they have free time to do so. So what needs to be done for PAs to attain recognition in Puerto Rico? Actually, the biggest stumbling block is to convince the Colegio Medico Cirujanos in Puerto Rico to accept the fact that the PA profession is actually the best solution for them to fill the gap of the physician void that they're having. That's the biggest stumbling block at this point. And because every physician on the island has to belong to their organization, it has a very huge lobbying power. So if they say no, basically everything that we have attempted stop on its tracks. Well, that being said, what are your thoughts about the future of the PA profession in Puerto Rico? I'm actually more excited now than I have been for quite a while. It's been very frustrating As I mentioned before, I've been working on this for now 20 years, believe it or not. Time goes fast when uh, you're getting older, I guess. But it seems like with the introduction of this legislation, even though it's not really for a PA profession, for the first time, we are going to have a word and be able to speak in public where the Puerto Rican people can actually hear our argument, why the profession is needed there, and how it can help the healthcare system. Thank you, Luis. No problem. Thanks for having me. We've been talking with Luis Ramos, Program Director of the Chatham University PA Program. And we look forward to following the growth of the PA profession in Puerto Rico, and we wish them great success. Partners in Practice has been produced this week in cooperation with the Association of Family Practice Physician Assistants, offering three annual CME conferences for PAs and NPs at family-friendly destinations nationwide. You can download this program or any other program at our library at ReachMD.com. 
You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you for listening.